One of the hardest things to accept in life is that we can't control everything. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Kira Wackett. Thanks for joining me for another video as we work to empower you and equip you with the confidence and skills to write your own story so that you can live a life on purpose. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the idea of radical acceptance, or the ability to accept what's not in our control for what it is, rather than spending time and energy trying to change it or being upset about it. We've all spent countless hours fighting the same losing battle, attempting to control what isn't in our control. We think we can fix everything, eliminate the unknown, stop failure. We falsely believe that the power has been bestowed upon us to make everyone like us, do what we want or believe what we believe and operate under our schedule of time and priorities. Trying to control what's not in our control is a universal experience. It's a sign of being human. We're conditioned to avoid uncertainty and discomfort and assume that there's a way to beat the system that is life. Both because we feel responsible to and because honestly it would be so much easier if we could. We tell ourselves things like, I can take care of everything. I can plan for every possibility. I'll be prepared for no matter what comes up. I can make everyone like me or I should be able to make everyone like me. I can make everything okay. I can make the world what I want and need it to be. For years, I operated under this assumption. And if I'm being honest, I still fall victim to these beliefs at times. I can make my mom quit using drugs was a big one that I felt for so many years. I can make X person like me or forgive me or see it my way. I can make this go faster so I don't have to wait. I can stop bad things from happening to Everly. That one's definitely been a hard one for me, especially more recently as she goes into the world and I see that I quite literally cannot stop bad things from happening to her. But the interesting thing is, these attempts to over control aren't a sign of strong organizational skills or of balance. They're honestly a sign of unchecked anxiety and distress. Why do I feel the need to control these things? What's better if I can? What does it say about me if I can't? And what is the view of the world I begin to develop if I see myself as the victim, villain, and hero in every story? By trying to control everything around me, I'm instilling a belief in myself that I can't handle hard things and that if they do happen, it's my fault. This is incredibly demeaning and overwhelming. There's a term used in therapy called radical acceptance. It's the procedural anecdote to this desire to control. The idea is that suffering is created by attaching ourselves to painful experiences, situations, people, and realities. They may be in our past or part of our present, or like in the case of my fears about something happening to Everly, a projection into the future. Radical acceptance is about learning to experience or prepare for these realities while accepting what is out of your control with regards to them. Now, these thoughts and experiences are of course scary and painful. Radical acceptance is not about pretending they aren't or saying to ignore them. It's about acknowledging and experiencing that without getting consumed by it or trying to avoid or fix it. It's about taking from an experience what serves you allowing yourself to grow from and continue your evolution as a self and let go of judgment so that you don't get stuck in the pain of that experience. The stuckness is what breeds that deeper suffering and is often predicated on that drive to over control. The idea derived from this concept is that when we can relinquish control over the things upon which we ultimately have none, we can shift to the things we do have control over. I can't control that my cousin was killed. I can't control that I experienced trauma. I can't control that people in the world don't like me or that I waited in traffic for 25 minutes to get home on what's normally a seven minute commute or that getting my COVID booster took almost two 
hours before I got into a scheduled appointment time that was supposed to take 10 to 15 minutes. But I can learn to see the world as bigger than me. I can learn to make space to feel my feelings, anger, sadness at the person who killed Sean, disappointment that he was taken from us, constant fear brought upon by the trauma that I faced, overwhelm and not being liked, or frustration that the world sometimes gets in my way, and then learn to accept them. And what has happened is a part of my experience on Earth. From there, I can consider the role I want these emotions to play, allowing them to inform my response without consuming it. If I don't, I get lost in that pain. I never move through that tunnel of emotions, and I get caught up in trying to right the wrongs or prevent or avoid the pain or to control the world around me. Let's think about this as it applies to you. What are all the things that you're trying to control in your life? What are all the painful realities that you have or will face that you're trying to avoid or dampen the experience of? How's it serving you? What's the cost? And does it even work? Many of you have heard me talk about the notion of Band-Aid solutions, or quick fixes and easy answers to try and make something better or go away. If you've ever found yourself reading the 10 ways to stand up for yourself, or five ways to make self-care land, you found yourself in the Band-Aid aisle. We often try and do whatever we can to make a change as easy as possible and to feel better now. We're motivated by avoidant goals, meaning I just wanna be anywhere but here. Even if where we're going is just another painful place or a desert of avoidance waiting to be bombarded with the flood of emotions we're holding on to as soon as the dam breaks. But the reality is, we can't control the world around us. And as much as we may have conditioned ourselves to believe, we are not the central character in everyone else's story. We're not always the problem. We're not always responsible. Everyone's not going out of their way to make our life harder. And sometimes we're just collateral damage. We are not the villain, victim, and hero in every single story. The staff at the grocery store were not trying to ruin my day by having me wait over an hour and a half before calling me back before my vaccine appointment. They were doing the best they could. It still sucked, but it happened. And the choice I get to make is how long I carry that stress with me the rest of the day and the impact that it has on how I spend the rest of my time. Let's consider then, what would it look like to let this go? What would it be like to stop trying to control everything in the world? How freeing might this be? How much responsibility and pressure might be relieved? How does letting go of the pressure and drive to control everything and everyone create a deeper foundation for self-love, self-efficacy, and self-compassion? Rather than it being your job to control everything or to have things be or look a certain way, you can see how well you actually handle things. Ultimately, the goal of radical acceptance is empowerment. When we focus on what's actually in our control and let go of what isn't, we can celebrate who we are and how we show up in the world. We don't get lost in a sea of resentment and helplessness, but instead see that many things involve pain. And as much as we wish we could avoid it, it's necessary. We see emotions for what they are transient experiences that only consume us if we give them space to do so. So where do we go from here? Think back to some of the questions I asked. What and who are you trying to control? Why? What is it doing for you? What scares you about letting that go? And what freedom and gains might come by doing so? Consider the role of acceptance and how it can play into neutralizing your relationship with emotions. Rather than avoiding pain or negative emotions, can we see them as neutral? And in each situation, thought, worry, etc., I want you to list what is in your control. Whether that's how you react to something, prepare for or plan for something, what's in your control and how can you bring your focus here? Finally, come up with one action step or pivot that can allow you to shift from an anxious response to an integrated response. Meaning, how can you respond not out of reactivity, but out of a sense of preparedness and responding rather than reacting? How can you accept what's true and show up anyways, being both an observer 
and a participant rather than a puppeteer. And along the way, you're gonna notice that your anxiety and other emotions show up or try to consume you. That's okay, give them space. Sometimes we just have to have a pity party and wallow. I feel like every six weeks or so, I tell Jordan I just need to be told that my life is harder than everyone else's. Even though I know that it's not, even though a lot of that is ignoring privilege or just my tunnel vision when my ego gets bruised or when I feel anxious, it's still important that I validate that so I can then let it go and realize it isn't harder than everyone else's. I actually don't have to compare how it relates to everyone else's, but I can tell myself life felt hard in that moment and life won't feel that way forever. Just remember, there's a difference between moving through the tunnel and simply lying down in the middle of it and getting swept up by these emotions. If you find yourself getting stuck there, then that's when we need to check in about what's going on and how do we let you out of that. Before you go, be sure to do yourself and your community a favor by leaving a comment about what your 1% change is going to look like moving forward. What are you taking with you? How are you going to dive deeper? How can you apply this concept of radical acceptance to the life that you're leading now to allow that one, two, three percent change to get to the life that you're working towards every day? And if you're looking for more resources, be sure to check out the video notes where I'm going to share links to some tools to help you through this process of letting go, including one of my favorite techniques, cognitive diffusion. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to save yourself the time and energy of having to check back for content and getting an alert whenever there's new awesomeness to come watch. And if you want to stay in the know on all of the happenings of Adversity Rising, plus get exclusive content and specials that I don't share anywhere else, subscribe to my email list. There's a link in the notes. Thanks for being here with me today. Letting go of the belief that we can and should control the world is a tough place to be. And I'm excited about the idea of all of us doing this work together and helping create a safer and more vulnerable space wherein we don't always have to feel like we need to be in control to be okay. It's time we let those stories go. Because remember, you have the right to author your own story and a story that works for you. Let's go get that pen back. See you next time.